Obviously, as you're here today, you must know that Julie Massange has been tortured now for, you know, a decade really, but um, it's specifically the last few years while he's been kidnapped from the Ecuadorian Embassy and in Belmart, which is basically UK's Guantanamo. Um, if, if we have, if we leave this situation, we kind of drop the ball, didn't we, on this one? I mean, uh, it's not really about the men, it's about the case of the president, um, that this is sitting, the journalism, um, for our children to be able to hold powder account in the future. If they allow a journalist to be extradited to the place that is actually threatened to poison him, assassinate him, um, and they have been embarrassed by the war crime that he accurately published about him, if that is allowed to happen, then really we're allowing the president of free press to, to be squashed all together forever. And I mean, effectively, we're enslaving our children. Um, now, I hope you know today, um, I really want to make a big noise for the London Surround Parliament event, because it's the only reason we're here. We're just doing a solidarity action, a yep. oh, human chain, however big we manage, um, just for a photo, um, because the London action, they probably will have 5,000 people, but unfortunately today, there was a there was a transport strike across the whole country, nationwide. Oh. Every time we have an Assange action, there's something like this. <laughs> I'm not kidding, I don't want to be the conspiracy theorist, but that is really what happens every time. So anyway, Corbyn was, was approached and asked to delay it. He he couldn't do anything. Uh, he wanted to, allegedly. Um, but anyway, the situation being that um, almost 5,000 people have signed up and that's what they believe they need. They're going to go from Big Ben across the river, along the south bank, because there's no footpath along the bridge, along the parliament on the river. And then they're going to come back on the other bridge, and then they're going all, all around. And um, at some point, there's going to be full horns go off, and then they're asked to join hands and stay there all day. And there's going to be lots of videographers. Stella, Julian's wife, is going to walk around and meet the whole chain. <coughs> I just almost cried when I read that on the way here. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, how beautiful. So. Um, we're really hoping that they manage to do it. It's, everything is going against them to try and achieve this. And I think it is, I mean, the world's first. Um, we actually have someone here, May. Where are you, May? There she is, who organised uh, another Surround Parliament um, New Zealand event for uh, anti-nuclear, anti-war. Um, so we actually have an experienced veteran activist. Um, anyway, uh, a lot of people, particularly, I have to say, in the freedom movement, have assumed Assange is a CIA agent, and then of course we know all the Hillary lefties think that he might be a Russian spy because they might have listened to Russia Gate. We know that he's been trashed as a as a rapist. We know we know all the false allegations. Where's the Greens? Uh, uh, the Greens, we well, as you might know, in 2018 we um, got a petition, an emergency petition, Greg and I, um, and we managed to get about 2,400 signatures. It was in Bloomberg, RT. Uh, Reuters, it was everywhere around the world, kind of taking the piss out of New Zealand offering asylum, you know, kind of actually, they did it in a bad light, but actually got so much coverage, it was great. Um, the, 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 the petition was tabled to Parliament, we got it in the door, all we wanted them to say is, basically all we wanted them to do is not sit on the fence and tell us, do they support the idea of discussing asylum for Assange or do they not? We only wanted them to talk about it, not to do it, because it was obviously a very difficult thing given he was in the embassy. Um, unfortunately, they said they had no jurisdiction, which is, I don't think true. You can offer asylum to someone, you know, I know that he wasn't on, on New Zealand soil and that might have been a legal issue, but hey, uh, they wouldn't even talk about it. And it's just not even in our jurisdiction, which was a disgrace. Um, no Green MP, no Latin National, no Labour. The guy that sponsored it to get it in, um, oh, Greg, remind me. It's Greg O'Connor. Oh, Greg O'Connor, uh, Labour MP. He was only doing it for free press. He, he didn't actually believe in our cause. Um, he didn't turn up to pick it up. The only people that covered our event were bloody Chinese media. <laughs> I mean, like, hello. Um, yeah. And as I was saying to the guards earlier, you might have heard me, we had one action here around the World Press Freedom Day where I'd done a rogue speech inside and, and a bit embarrassed them. Oh, and they weren't allowing Assange activists to even gather addresses and phone numbers from other people, from people here. And we'd actually managed quite a nice turnout. So we were like, oh, please. Crazy. It was completely against the law, obviously, and we checked on it the next day, didn't we, Greg? And it was against the law, of course. Uh, it was just the speaker's stupid rules for the day. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll, I'll get back to it. 
Um, there are events in 22 cities, solidarity events, right? Some of them small. Uh, my collective group, which is kind of the New Zealand branch of Assange, but also one of them, um, Candles for Assange, who lists all the actions and we gather them together and we make people graphics and we try and get them into the idea of doing it all the same day. So that's kind of our sort of like a listing service. Um, and so, um, yeah, the big one is DC, where they're going to surround the DOJ. show our New Zealand efforts with the beehive in the background. Um, anyone else who wants to talk now? I'm actually going live with um, Rogan here, so I might be busy. Um, but right now I'm going to try. I don't know if the wind is going to get me, so I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> been arrested in Russia, probably for good reason. Meanwhile, it's really now the ignoble peace prize because the person who should have won the peace prize is Julian, Julian Assange. Assange. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Kay. Kay writes a lot of letters about. So um, I sent a few war. little messages out to one or two media. Yeah, great. About Thank the you. ignoble peace prize. You know, You're Obama ignoble. also <laughs> won. Yes. The That'll yeah, be a great yeah, tweet. Yeah. He, had, he, had, he had bombed more countries and uh, and uh, more <laughs> illegal drone strikes on people, on human beings. Hey. And he also was an ignoble. Yeah, of course. The, the Swedish and he's been nominated seven, seven times. Seven or seven times. times. Yeah. He's they, been nominated. They, they have lost all credibility now. Yeah. A, a person who's just recently been arrested in Russia for probably good reason. Yeah. And Julian Assange yeah. is in 10 years. Absolutely. Tortured and threatened with 175 years. How can America get away with this and our media is silent? Yeah. Thank you, Kay. Exactly. Come up and talk about it. I'm going to hear more from you. I'm going to just say my screen actually. So there may be a minor and a, and a normal version. Uh, <coughs> on, can anyone start me off with the bloody national oh, anthem? Because I get them mixed up. Which <laughs> one? <laughs> Our one, yeah. New Zealand. Oh. I want an upside down New Zealand flag with it. Good off nations. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. Okay, I just need to start. <laughs> 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 Go, girl. Thank <laughs> you. 
hundred years. And a lot of people say, what's the relevance to New Zealand? They are so, he's so far away and that happened so long ago. But it is actually very relevant to us. Just to look at what this government has been doing in the last two, three years. And imagine a country, a society, without any whistleblowers. They can get away with whatever they do. Exactly. The corruption, the war crimes, all of the things they can do, just like they try, have been trying to do in the, in the last many, few years, so the corruption happens in the government. And we have to be very, very worried about the trend, about what's already happened and what most likely will happen in the, because it's going that way and the very bad way. And I was like, hey, we have to be so worried when this happened, when so many of us, I'm sure quite a few of us here actually used to support Labour and Green, yeah. especially yeah. me yeah. <laughs> as well. I campaigned for their elections, the last few elections, really hard. But just because I want to defend, we want to defend our basic human rights, our bodily autonomy, and look, Autonomy, that's the word. And look at what happened. We have been demonized as overnight. I haven't changed a bit, but overnight. We become the enemy of the state. And how could that be right? And we have to be so worried when our Prime Minister think, talking and believing she's like a god. She's the only source of truth. And how can that be right? Either government or the Prime Minister is dangerous. Just following on from what the last speaker said, um, and I understand we're here about Julian Assange and the deplorable state of mainstream media reporting uh, in terms of what's told to us, what's not told to us, and what's only partially told to us or what is told to us in a scramble that tries to make it like what it not, make it something other than what it is. And it's, it's a real problem, and it's no wonder we do not have a well-informed democracy given the level of journalism in New Zealand oh, yeah, today. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Francie identified a number of things that have come to light in the last couple of years, and I've done two things about it or I've done one thing and I'm on the case about another and one is is I, I moved the petition into the parliament which had been uh, uh, was sponsored by David Seymour of that party and it's before the petitions committee and there's been a whole lot of paperwork put into it and it's coming to an end and that petition is to um, create an amendment to section five of uh, the Bill of Rights of New Zealand. And the new amendment would say uh, it would it'd be section 5A, so under section five justified limits, a new section 5A unjustified limits. It would say none of sections four, five, or six provide any justified limits on the rights and freedoms in sections eight, nine, 10, and 11. My petition is to say that never again can they do that, right? Because there would be nothing, right, that would provide any justified limit on those four, those rights in section 8, 9, 10, and 11, right? The right not to be deprived of life, the right not to be tortured, the right not to, uh, to be experimented upon, and the right to refuse medical treatment. So, They've sought advice for, uh, in respect to the petition in my paper, and that, they went to the Ministry of Justice, and the Ministry of Justice provided a four-page uh, response, piece of advice, and nothing in what they said, right, provides any impediment to Parliament adopting the petition that I, or the amendment that I'm proposing. So, at some point in the near future, there will be a report produced by the, the petitions committee and it would be then for someone in the parliament to move something or do something about it. So 
I mean, wait and see. But that is a mechanism that we could use in the Bill of Rights. I'm oh, sure they can hear me. <laughs> now they really hear me. <laughs> Yay! Um, I'm sure that that mechanism, even if the Parliament doesn't pick it up at this point in time, does provide a means to put a line in the sand in the Bill of Rights where they cannot go any further in terms of a person's bodily integrity. Right? Um, but definitely, if we had a proper press, if they told us the facts, not layered in lies and bullshit, we would be in a totally different world to the one that we currently exist in and Julian Assange would definitely be a free man able to conduct his family life. Yeah. If only. Word. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Is that all going still? <laughs> yep. Cool. Okay. Here you are. <laughs> um, I hope that's high resolution. hope so. Okay. <laughs> so, um... Uh, you want it? China, maybe come around a little. If we come in a little bit on this side and join it all up. Let me hold Francis's hand. Just go around. Let's Hi, darling. Just join it up. Can I, can I, um, just... Yeah, sorry. Um, Okay, so, oh, I'm doing a selfie. All right, so can here we, we are, we've got this we queue. Sure I'm just going to go walk around because that's what Stella's going to do. Okay, there's going to be one more in it, I'm coming. <laughs> um, oh, hang on. What's happening here? I think I'm back to front. Um, Can someone take over from me and do it again? <laughs> Free Assange! Free Assange! Free Assange! Can you, can you take it and film it or someone? Free Assange! Can you do one round? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. And I want to be in it. <laughs> okay. Free Assange! 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 Okay, I'm going to go from the outside. And it looks amazing, guys. Thank you. Okay, it doesn't mean it's over. We can have more music, more speakers, more chalking. Anyone take a chalk? Anyone take flyers you want? There's a few hundred there. Um, anyone who wants to speak, please feel free to come up again because I didn't want to stop it forever. Um, I do have to get off this live stream and go talk to Canada, which I missed, but anyway. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sign off now. How do I do that? Yeah, I'm just trying to, just to, I don't know. Hang on, yeah, good, good on you, good on you. Does he, do you know how to stop a live stream? Because I don't. Okay. No idea. Are you on YouTube or Facebook? Um, YouTube. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, well, you're on the Okay. Okay, well. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah, I think that's the important thing to remember, that um, Julian hasn't actually had his appeal against the decision to extradite yet. The, the only appeal that's been held was the American appeal against the points, the health points, essentially, on which it was specifically decided not to extradite. Um, Julian's appeal against extradition 
uh, is still awaited. Uh, and that will shift the courtroom focus uh, back again onto the fundamental questions of human rights and freedom of speech, on the abuses of process in the case, the fact that the uh, American government uh, was spying on Julian's uh, legal conferences, but they obtained all of his legal documents from the uh, Ecuadorian authorities after he was removed from the embassy, on the fact that the uh, extradition treaty under which he's being extradited specifically states there should be no political extradition, are numerous other uh, points of appeal which are yet to be heard. I should be very, very surprised if the High Court doesn't agree to hear uh, that appeal, so we have some time to go. But the problem is, of course, that all this time Julian is held in, in dreadful conditions in a maximum security prison. So, to some extent, the, the process is for punishment, but the, the process still has a long way to go. Well, this isn't supposed to be a political case, but how likely is it that the, the US or the UK would want some of those matters to be heard in court? Yeah. I think um, it's going to be very difficult to prevent the court. It's very, very hard to see an argument that the, that the High Court should not hear um, uh, the appeal, because plainly there are, there are points of, of appeal on which there are legal principles of quite a high magnitude to be, to be discussed, particularly about the right to confidentiality of, uh, uh, of legal consultation. Um, and, of course, the, the entire principle of the application of the extradition treaty and, and all its provisions um, under which the application takes place. The, the UK government's point, viewpoint is that there is nothing in general that prevents the UK government from breaking international law in its domestic law, that, that an international treaty doesn't bind the UK in, in what it does internally. Um, and even if you accept that is true, and I, I mean, it's, it's a very bad thing, but it is true that the British courts have always held that the UK government is not bound by external treaties. Whether that can be said to apply to a treaty which is the operating uh, which is the, the operating instrument under which extradition is taking place. Um, and it, it post-dates as well, doesn't it? It post-dates, it, wasn't it 2007, the treaty, but the, the, the act is earlier? That's true. It, 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 it does indeed. Um, and before, uh, before that, no political extradition was um, specifically included in the UK's general uh, extradition legislation. Um, but I mean, all, all, all of this is bluntly nuts. You, you know, Julian is being charged for espionage by, by a country, and he hasn't been near that country either at the time of the offence or since. You know, he's an Australian citizen who's operating outside the United States, so how he can be said to have committed an offence within the United States, uh, <laughs> you know, in considering the extradition at all, the... United Kingdom is admitting an extraordinary United States claim of universal jurisdiction. There, there, there's so many legal points which, which are just completely wrong uh, in, in this case that it's very hard to believe that the High Court won't hear them. Uh, and I, I personally believe the High Court will hear them. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean we will win. I, 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 mean, I think anybody who believes that in political cases like this the courts are genuinely independent is extremely naive. It would be extremely naive to believe that. Um, I think you've answered my question there, Craig, and, and uh, the crowd is really thinned out here. I can see a big, big crowd down there at uh, Oliver Cromwell's uh, statue, so we really should head down, I think. And hopefully, if you get there quickly, we'll hear you speak to a bigger audience. But you have spoken to the whole wild, wide world here on Consortium News, or so to speak. <laughs> Thank you so much Lovely for that. To Lovely to see you again. Okay.
We are at Wellington. We've had about an hour, I think, here. Um, a few people have gone home now. Would you believe we went live? We put it all up. We saw a few people watching on my Alex Hills channel on YouTube. And then below me, if I'm waiting for the processing and it's never come and there's never been a thumbnail. Um, oh, gosh. I don't even know if this video is working. It's just ridiculous. Okay. Yep, it is working. I just had to check. All right, so I'm going to go down. Free Assange! 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 So this is a lot less people than we had last time. Free But we're doing it again. Just because people Assange. have to go. Free Assange. Okay, Free who's going to take Assange. over from me? Free yeah? Assange. Who's going to take Free over from me? Here we go, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay. Is it going? Is there numbers at the bottom? Can you see it? Yeah. Yep, we're on. Okay, we're on. Right. We're on. So, a smaller one than last time. Okay. YouTube deleted our video, we think. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, that's probably. Oh. Okay, here we go. Free, Free Assange. Assange. Free Assange. Free Assange. Free Assange. Free Assange! 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 Not me, no. He got you, eh? Free Assange! They were chasing him yesterday And he had to stow himself away He had to take extreme caution Cause they were very strong Oh, 